Welcome to Envisioned Broadcasting Radio, your station for empowerment, music, and talk radio. EB Radio presents Empower Hour with Jerisha. show that shares the stories behind the journeys of leaders, influencers, and motivators. The Empower Hour with Jerisha begins now. Hey, amazing people. Welcome back to Empower Hour with Jerisha. I am your host, Jerisha Moore Smith, and I'm so excited, so excited. I get so excited for Wednesdays because it gives me an opportunity to come to you to share information, insights, tips that's really going to empower you for growth and success. And today I want you to know, just like every single show, I tell you this because I truly believe it, okay? I truly believe you have the power to be great to have great and do great. You just have to be willing to unleash your greatness and take action. Now listen, 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 listen. Tonight, okay, tonight we are going to have fun on this show this evening because so many of us right now are going through and dealing with, uh, we're dealing with so much from challenge relationships from, you know, having all these bills. Some of us are dealing with sickness and disease and within ourselves as well as our family. We're fighting with loved ones. We're dealing with difficult children. We're facing so many different things as far as making big decisions. Some of us are dealing with extreme debt. You name it, right? We are dealing with it. And tonight, we are going to talk about how we are dealing with stress. Yes, you heard it right. Stress, we all have it. We all have stress, right? But it's how we are actually able to take control of our life by managing that stress. And tonight we are simply going to talk about how we are breaking up with stress, right? So dear stress, let's break up. Let's jump right into it because like I said, tonight is going to be so much information that we're going to unpack when we think about just the day-to-day in life, right? It makes me think of a quote that um, one of the Beatles, John Lennon, um, actually said, which is, everything would be okay in the end. If it's not okay, it's not the end. And so that's so good and so relevant right now because it truly speaks on this journey called life, right? But if there is if there is an element of false hope that has the potential to be overlooked with that quote, with that statement, as the only way that everything will be okay in the end, and if you make that conscious effort to do something, to do something about your life, Okay, so we have to make that conscious effort to do something about our life and what we truly desire. And so we're going to tap into that. We're really going to tap into that this evening. And, you know, please, 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 please don't, you know, don't get me wrong. Um, I would much rather you believe that that your life will amount to everything that you desire. Okay, as opposed to to feeling feeling that you are always going to fall short. But what truly gets me even more enthusiastic, okay? What truly gets me super excited is to witness people who are fulfilling their life mission and purpose, right? You know, on this show, that is exactly what I talk about every single week. Whether it's me talking or whether you hear someone that's on the show, a leader, motivator, influencer, that's going to come on the show and truly share their tips, tools to really empower you all for growth and success. Because ultimately, that's what it's all about is fulfilling your life's mission and purpose. 
and nothing that is worthwhile ever comes effortlessly. But the journey is worth it. And I can assure you tonight as we dive into just this whole thought process, this whole journey of stress, that if we can learn to think positively, okay, when we think positively, it is not only the ingredient to get you to your destination, it is really, really, really something that we need to make sure we're doing every single day. And it's hard, it's tough, especially when we're dealing with so many different things, like I mentioned, the stressors, the things that, you know, the debt, the the challenges from work, the challenges from managing a business or trying to be successful as an entrepreneur, all of those, all of those things are so stressful. But that's why tonight I really want to share a, um, if you will, a step-by-step strategy that that I feel like will truly work and actually guarantee that will work for you. But, (laughs) but I will say this. I will definitely say this. You have to be willing, okay? You have to be willing to say that I am on this journey and I'm not going to stop, okay? I'm not going to stop until, until whatever it is, until whatever that thing is, that, that, that you desire until you get that. So tonight, as I dive into some of the strategies that I'm going to share to really, you know, help you that has helped myself with just dealing with, you know, this thing called stress. Um, I really want you to be able to tap into it. I really want you to be able to tap into that thing. But at the end of the day, it's all about the action that we're going to take, right? It's that action And you have to really make that commitment to yourself that you're not going to stop until you get whatever it is that you absolutely desire. And so when we think about desire, desire is uh, a subjective term that must be defined by you because the beauty, the beauty of, of a life vision is that it's, it's absolutely unique to the beholder. So for you, maybe it's, is financially based, maybe it's health related or relationship focused, or maybe even adventure oriented, or a combination of all of these and more. What you got to understand is what you're about to learn will make you will really help you and make you make you see this reality. You know, see that this reality is is really something that you can accomplish but you have to be persistent. You, you have to literally take action. And so, you know, you have to know that you're going to face stress on this journey. You know, I've shared many of the things that we're all stressing about now. And, you know, whether you could identify with one of the items on that list or, or whether you have some other, maybe you can identify with all of the items on that list. But just know that every step of the way, you're going to face some kind of stress, some kind of obstacle, some kind of challenge on this on this journey. The key is to learning how to handle it and then adapt to it so that it either it, it, it either derails you slightly or 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 not at all. And so stress is very real and extremely dangerous you know, I, I'm before I jump into sharing anything as far as strategies that can help you, I need you all to understand that every single day, people suffer from stress. Um, people die from stress. People are, you know, are living their lives trying to deal with stress on an everyday basis. You know, people like yourself, people like me, but at the end of the day, I don't want that to be your story. So I hope you're ready. I hope you're excited to learn this evening as we dive into stress and all that comes along with it. So tonight I'm going to share with you um, a story about two women 
one's name, um, we'll just say her name is Mary and the other one's name is Tasha. Now, Mary, she's in her 30s, late 30s. She has a couple of children. She's married. She um, is in the corporate world and she, she is about, let's just say 25 pounds overweight. And then Tasha, she is um, in her early 40s. She has a few children. She also is happily married and she's in the corporate world as well. And she is also um, about, we'll just say she's about 20, 25 pounds overweight. Now, both Mary and Tasha have made a decision. And so what we generally do is recognize that there are areas in our life that we 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 know better, so we need to be doing better, right? And so um, Mary and Tasha decided that it's time for us to lose weight, so we're going to go on a diet. But before they go on a diet, I need you to really hear what Mary says. So Mary says this thing. She says, dieting is so hard and limiting. I have tried everything and nothing works. Now, on the other hand, let me let me share with you what Tasha says about the whole idea and concept of dieting. So Tasha says, I am super excited to eat highly nutritious foods. I am going to increase my energy for my children and I can't wait. I cannot wait to wear that bikini this summer. Now, both women, both women, Mary and Tasha, who do you think will be successful? Who do you think will be successful? Now, before we dig into Mary and Tasha and who you truly feel like would be successful based off of their thought process, this experience, this experience that we're going to dive into this evening is is really all about if you're willing to go on this journey, okay? So let me explain to you what, what that means. This journey that we're on to really dive into stress and really our thought process, it, it's, I'm going to take you through this process where the outcome, the outcome is you taking control over your life by learning how to handle the daily stresses you're exposed to effectively. So I'm going to ask you to step outside of that comfort zone. I'm going to ask you to answer some introspective questions. I'm going to ask you to look into your future. I'm going to ask you to assess your present and your past. And I will ask you to commit to taking action. And I'm only, I'm only doing this because of the fact that I want you to really look at your thought process. And so here, here is really your chance. All the listeners out there, I know, again, that we're all, we're all dealing with all kinds of stressors, all kinds of stress, that it, it becomes so hard for us to carry, so hard for us to bear, right? But... I'm so happy that you're tuning in and listening to the show this evening because I really feel like you're going to pull something. You're going to pull something from this show. You're going to really um, discover something new within yourself. I pray that thing for you, that you're going to discover something new in yourself and how you can effectively handle and take control of your life. So handle stress and take control over your life. There is a proverb that says, when you have your health, you have a thousand dreams. And when you don't, you have one. My goal for you is that you will be able to dream big, dream bold, and dream without any limitations, right? Dream big, dream bold, and dream without any limitations. So if you wanted to go on a road trip, it would, it would, um, it would be rather important first for for you to decide where you want to go, right? As opposed to just getting in the car, driving aimlessly and arriving wherever the road takes you. Like we would never do that. So the same holds true for your life. You need to define, you need to define what thinking well means to you. So what you have to understand is 
how this thinking well applies to the stressors, the things that you're dealing with on a day to day, the things that is causing you stress that could be affecting your body in so many different ways. Thinking well, maybe you have a desire to to have more financial security, a better, or more sensual love relationship to improve your health, more respectful children. Maybe you want a larger home or or a more exciting career. Once you have that clarity, okay, once you have that clarity based on what you desire from your life, you will be able to focus on what needs to get done. Here, you know, I'm all about questions. So I'm going to give you some questions to help you really internalize. So I hope as always, like I say, when you come to this show and listen, you should always have some kind of notebook handy. One of the questions I want you to ask yourself is what does your ideal life look like? What are you able to do that you're not able to do now? That now that that I'm going to repeat that again. First question was what does your ideal life look like? What are you able to do that you're not able to do now? What is holding you back now from having your ideal life? What action do you think you need to take today? that will get you closer to your ideal life. Now, I know these questions will push you. So take some time in the coming days to revisit them and feel free, please feel free to reach out, connect with me. You can reach out and connect with me via email, social media. Email is uh, Jerisha, J-A-R-E-S-H-A at empower on purpose.com and then you can find me on social media um, just by typing in my handle Jerisha Moore. So ultimately with asking those questions, what is the thing that what is that story that that is ruling your life? What is that story that's ruling your life? There is a quote that that simply says, man often becomes what he believes himself to be. If I keep on saying to myself that I cannot do a certain thing, it is possible that I may end by really becoming incapable of doing it. On the contrary, if I have the belief that I can do it, I I shall surely acquire the capacity to do it, even if I may not have it at the beginning. Now, that's so powerful because everything in life is what it is. And then our context, right? So if we think about that, let's think about this for a moment. That is just, it's so powerful. It's so powerful. It's so powerful to know that it's our own thought process that can really can really control the action of whether we do something or whether we don't do something or whether we believe we can do something or whether we believe that we cannot do it. It's our belief that drives behaviors. Our beliefs drive behaviors. And maybe for a minute you're thinking, you know what? My desire in life is to become a millionaire. This would would be... (laughs) your what is, right? This would be your what is. Your what is a desire to become a millionaire. Now your story would either propel you forward so that this becomes a reality or it will hold you back again. We have to think about the things that we want in our lives. We have to think about the things that we're trying to accomplish so our goals, our purpose, and our desires. And if you desire to do something, what is really stopping you? I can almost I can almost say with certainty that many of us have these desires to do things and we get in our own way. We get in our own way. So if your desire is to become a millionaire, if your desire is to become an entrepreneur, if your desire is to build your dream house, you can do that. But we have to make sure we're not getting 
in our own way, right? We have to make sure we're not getting in our own way. And, and this just makes me think about um, the fact that, you know, so say for instance, if, if, like I said, if you said, oh, I want to become um, a millionaire and, and then all of a sudden your thought process is, well, if I was a millionaire, when I become a millionaire, I will, I will become greedy or selfish and probably lose all of the people I care about most. Now, a lot of us have that that internal dialogue, right, that happens. And then we have that internal dialogue that plays and it's that that prevents and stops us from taking action. That internal dialogue or that negative self-talk. And so, you know, and in, in even going back to some of the desires. So maybe your desire is not to be a millionaire. Maybe your desire may be to improve improve you know relationships and and so if you're making statements like in order to improve my relationship I would need to compromise on all of my hobbies and never see friends again then how in the world do you expect for things to to take off for you how do you how in the world do you expect to to move past that and and actually have that loving relationship if that is your your internal dialogue. See, you, we have to be careful with the belief system that we've adopted. If you adopted a specific belief system as your own, then we have to understand, because many of us, it's not just our own negative self-talk. It's, it's what may have come from either parents or families, friends, and, and all of that as well. So then their internal dialogue or, you know, their, their internal dialogue and talk becomes our, our internal dialogue in, in self-talk. It is so essential for us to figure out what subconscious or even conscious stories that we're telling ourselves. And I would guarantee if you are not living the life you have always desired, it's because your story is preventing this from manifesting for you. So it goes back to the narrative. What is the narrative? What is your story? What is the narrative that you're telling yourself? Now there are two, there, there's, there, there's a quote that says there are two great days in a person's life. The day we are born and the day we discover why. And it's William Barclay that actually said that. What is your drive? What is driving you to think positively every single day? Why is this even important to you in the first place? The most powerful asset that you have is your why. Okay? The most powerful asset that you have is your why. As in, why do you want to do what you do? This statement, (laughs) this statement, okay, will become your driving force if and when your old story begins to creep back into your life and starts to anchor you once again. We have been telling ourselves that going back to the things that we stress out about, that has become our narrative. That has become our negative self-talk. That has become the things that have stopped us from being, doing, and having what we want in life, what has stopped us from manifesting our dreams and manifesting the things that we want. If you desire to become a millionaire, why? Why is that your desire? If you desire to have a loving relationship, why is that your desire? If you desire to improve your health, why is that your desire? If you desire to change your career and perhaps become an entrepreneur, why is that your desire? The key to recognize, the key to recognize is that your why, your why cannot be this inclusive or surface level response that that sounds good to us. It must be rooted in deep meaning, maybe even experience. That will drive you even when everything inside 
says stop. So it's that that internal dialogue, right? That negative self-talk, that that narrative that we're telling ourselves. And this is why positive thinking is so important. It's so important when when the going gets tough, which we know it will. Your default cannot be everything. Your default cannot be. Everything will get better. And instead, it must be, I will make everything better by doing X, Y, Z. That's where you fill in the blank. Because my drive is big. My drive is greater. Now, this may be worth writing down for you to be able to go back and fill in your own blanks. And so because of that, I'm going to repeat it. When the going gets tough, which we know it will, your default cannot be everything will get better. And instead, it must be I will make everything better by doing what? That's where you fill it in. Because my drive is what? Now, I think this is really, really important for you to spend some time over Because again, going back to that why, we know that we have so many different things that we're dealing with already. And then on top of that, many of us are dealing with life because of the pandemic, whatever that may look like for you. So why do you do what you do? Why do you do what you do? Hmm. I am a firm believer that We can change our story and change our life. So again, going back to that narrative, if you think you can do a thing or think you can't do a thing, you are absolutely right. And Henry Ford said that. And now that we are aware of the story that might be holding us back and why it is so essential to destruct this this limiting this limiting belief it is now time for us to truly change the narrative change the narrative that will in turn change your life and i truly i call this rephrasing because it is not only about changing the words of the story that you communicate within your mind but it's also a requirement to change the emotions that you attach to the story so that so that you can use that quote that I mentioned by Henry Ford. You can use that to your advantage, right? You can use that to your advantage. So if we think back to the whole desire of, you know, maybe you're saying you want to become a millionaire, you know, that old story of yours might say might look like this. When I become a millionaire, I will become greedy, selfish, and probably lose all the people I care about. And the new story, this, the new story would be when I become a millionaire, I will have the ability to help people who are less fortunate, share my success with the people I care about the most, become an even better role model for my children. Because they will see someone who who has accomplished their goals and become a better, a better lover to my significant other. Because I will create more opportunity for us to get away. So what does that say to you? That says that you need to banish the story of limitation and replace it with the dialogue of opportunity. This means you need to sit down with a paper and pen or perhaps even your computer and begin to write your new story. The one that will guide you to where you desire, the where you desire your life to go. What is your new story? What is the new narrative? What is that new narrative that you're telling yourself? What is the old story that you need to do away with and start writing the new? Now, Benjamin Franklin says, I rise early almost every morning. I should say he said, I rise early almost every morning and sit in my chamber without any clothes, whatever. 
half an hour or an hour, according to the season, either reading or writing, this practice is not in the least painful, but on the contrary, agreeable. And if I return to bed afterwards, before I dress myself, as sometimes, as sometimes happens, I make a supplement to my night's rest of one or two hours of the most pleasing sleep that can be imagined. And again, that was by Benjamin Franklin. So far, we have spent time digging into internal dialogue, that internal dialogue that is holding you back from thinking positivity, thinking positively and thinking well and realizing the life that you truly desire. And now it is time for us to truly take or get into taking some serious action. And we're going to define the action as those rituals for success. So you need to create a routine of daily rituals that you're going to use to begin to think positively or thinking well to eliminate stress and pursuing your life's vision. And I'm going to give you some ideas to really help you get that underway. First being meditation. Now you've heard me talk about meditation so much on this show um, in the past, and I'm going to continue talking about it because I definitely think it's worth talking about because of how much it is, it been, it's so beneficial. So what if you gave yourself the permission to meditate for 10 minutes a day? You must, you must give yourself the ability to be alone with your thoughts for at least 10 minutes. Okay. 10 minutes daily. So this might mean that you get to work 10 minutes early and, and sit in your car or, you know, many of us are working from home. So You have time. It's just a matter of making the time. Also writing. So one thing that I have seen work just absolutely wonders for myself when it comes to really thinking positively is the act of writing every day for um, at least 10 to 15 minutes. You know, sometimes I write about gratitude. Other times I write about vision And every now and then I write about frustrations, those frustrations, even those need to be put on paper. And then one of the, one of the things that, you know, I also, um, would say goes hand in hand with this is play. So, you know, even though we're adults, we still have to make time to, we have to have that time, um, because we literally are in a world where it's always go, 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 go. And it's nice to be able to do something you enjoy doing. So maybe it's dancing, singing, playing an instrument, cooking, or whatever it may be for you. But we have to have that time that we're going to create the space in our life for play. And I would say, honestly, doing this a couple times a week, these moments will become something that you look forward to. And even if you have children, then have the children play with you. It can become a a family activity. And then also reading, finding books with meaning, okay? And finish, finish at least one empowerment book each quarter to help you. The goal of, of, um, of that is to really be able to, to find a book that's going to empower you, um, that's going to open your perspective to new opportunities. And so that it's going to help you in accomplishing your goals. Right. So you, we need to really think twice about, um, you know, reading and really making sure we're we're um, reading books like, you know, like we like we should. One of the other things is mantra. So um, I actually utilize mantras, but um, I would honestly encourage each and every one of you, you know, now that you're looking at, you know, a new story for your life, make this your mantra. And recite it at least once a day. Scream it out loud and let the world know that the time is here. The time is now for everyone to know what is possible for you. And then also refuel and re-energize. So I'm a firm believer in making sure we take care of self. And honestly speaking, when we think about stress and the daily stressors that we go through, it's so important to refuel and re-energize and those go together okay 
refuel and re-energize. It's so important. And the way that we can do that as well is not just a matter of, you know, looking at what we're taking in from, you know, the foods that we're eating and the rest that we're going to be getting, but also our attitude. How is our attitude from a day to day? Because if we're not getting enough sleep, yes, what's affected? Our attitude. Most of us could, you know, if we're thinking negatively and, you know, just really having a hard time dealing with the day to day, maybe we need to check to see if we've had enough rest. If our attitudes are cranky, look at your eating and sleeping habits. But ultimately, one of these strategies is absolutely going to help you. Ultimately, it's a matter of you knowing that these are the things that's causing stress in your life. Again, whether it's finances, whether it's relationships, whether it's your career, we all are going through stresses. But the first thing is knowing that it's a stress and then taking the action, looking at that story. What is the story that you've been telling yourself? What is that old story that you have been telling yourself? And what is the new story that you're going to write? I'm a firm believer that each and every last, I mean, each and every one of us, there is a strategy that can help us, that can help us in managing those stresses. And then ultimately, we want to visualize what we stand to gain, right? So Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And this is so powerful. It's so powerful because it's it's time for us to see ourselves as someone who is already living in their ultimate desired life. How do you see yourself? What is your vision? What does that look like for you? What does it feel like for you? What will you be doing? What does it mean for your family, for your friends, for your health, for your finances, for your relationships? What does it mean for you? You need to see this vision so clearly, okay, that the vision becomes your reality, And now is just a matter of time before you arrive at your vision. You know, when we think about vision and how it works hand in hand with the narrative that we're going to tell ourselves, because often we'll see, we'll see what it is that we want. And then going back to talking about that negative, that negative narrative, really that narrative that we're going to tell ourselves that prevents us from getting whatever that thing is. So when we thought about Mary and, and, um, and Tasha and how Mary and her, you know, what she thought about the, the diet plan and she had already, even though she knew she wanted to lose the 20, 25 pounds and go on the diet, she had already seen herself not succeeding right? And many of us do that. It's that narrative. It's okay. Yes, this sounds like a great idea. And the more that we think through that process, the more we talk ourselves out of it, the more we allow that narrative, that internal dialogue to prevent us from taking the action that we need to. So it's so important for us to really get clear on that vision and focus on that new narrative that we need to be writing for our goals, for the things that are causing stress within our lives. It's so important for us to look at it from a different perspective. And then ultimately, when it comes down to any stresses that we're dealing with from a day to day, I firmly believe that it is so important to assemble a a team, okay? I will tell you that for myself, I have an amazing powerhouse supportive team, you know, whether it's you needing to network with people who are supporting you and the people that you're going to support, we need to have people, okay? We don't understand that there is power 
in the pack, okay? There is power. We know that when we accomplish things together, it just can be so powerful. But we need to have that accountability network. We need to be able to hold each other accountable because when you fall off track and you will trust and believe, you will fall off track. You will struggle. But that is the thing when you have that team, it makes those challenges. It makes those, you know, you falling off those struggles short lived because the fact that you are associated with people who get it, who can help you get back on track. That is what we need. That is what I have. I would encourage every last one of you to make sure if you don't have a team, if you're not connected with like-minded people who are driven to create health, to create happiness, to create wealth, to create abundance, please reach out to me because I definitely want to get you connected with a team, with my team, with others that are like-minded. So I would absolutely invite you to join me and my team so that you can get connected with a powerhouse team. Last but not least, I um, I simply, you know, want to share, there are four A's that I'm going to share with you as another strategy to really help you when it comes down to um, just success and and managing your stress well, and then also, you know, making sure you're going to be thinking well. And what I, what I really want you to pull from this, if you don't pull anything else, is that your time is the most important asset to protect. So this strategy that I'm going to share, which is four A's, and so um, I'm going to give them to you here in a moment, but it is your key to success when it comes down to thinking well and thinking positively so one being avoid okay that's the first a avoid unnecessary stress my goodness it is not healthy okay it is not healthy to avoid a stressful situation that needs to be addressed Now, I really feel like this is something that somebody needs to really hear. So, you know, as I always say, if I feel like it's something that that really is strong and powerful, I'm going to repeat it. Avoid unnecessary stress. It's not healthy to avoid a stressful situation that needs to be addressed. But you may be surprised by the number of stressors in your life that you can eliminate. So we have to learn to say no. Now that's powerful in itself because so many of our stress that we go through from a day to day could simply be avoided if we learn to say no. Avoid people who you know will create stress. Then set up your environment in a way where stress is limited and trim down your to-do list. So all of those fall within avoid okay the first a is avoid the second a is alter alter the situation if you can't avoid a stressful situation try to alter it often this involves changing the way you communicate and operate in your daily life so communicate how you feel consider a compromise if stress will be altered Balance your schedule ASAP, okay? (laughs) Balance your schedule. The third A is adapt to the stressor. If you can't change the stressor, change yourself. You can adapt to stressful situations and regain your sense of control by changing your expectations and your attitude. Reframe your problem into an opportunity. Focus on your why in the big picture and then live in gratitude. Now, the fourth, the fourth and final A is accept the things you can't change. Some sources of stress are unavoidable. You can't prevent or change stressors such as a death of a loved one, a serious illness 
or a national recession or a pandemic. In such cases, though, the best way to cope with stress is to accept things as they are. Acceptance may be difficult, and I know that it is, but in the long run, it's easier than than railing against a situation you can't change. So with accepting the things you can't change, that is letting go of control when this is not an option. Finding the silver lining, okay? Forgiveness is often the answer as well. And we have to be willing to express our feelings. So remember, remember the four A's, avoid, alter, adapt, and accept. Avoid, alter, adapt, and accept. We have to remember, remember those. And last but not least, y'all, you know that I truly believe that whatever stressors, whatever things we're going through from a day to day, we have to be willing to give ourselves credit for who we are and what you have achieved. Now, I am a firm believer in celebrating self, celebrating self, celebrating self. And so what that means is the things that you achieve. How have you celebrated yourself? Are you celebrating yourself? If you're not celebrating yourself, I truly believe that you should start celebrating those accomplishments, giving yourself credit right now for, for, you know, the huge accomplishments and milestones within your life from my goodness, if you have children That is a huge, I mean, just having kids in this day and age is a lot, right? Children, if you just recently got a new job, if you started a new business, those are all accomplishments, okay? Maybe it was just enough for you to be able to go throughout the day and not feel stress, anxiety, whatever it may be. That's an accomplishment. Give yourself credit right now. What is your number one accomplishment? Write that down. Give yourself credit. And remember, don't ever, ever give up. Do what you do, what you do. Do what you want to do and make sure you're going to always manifest your dreams. Make sure you're going to always remember your why. So why do you do what you do? Don't ever give up. Don't ever give in. Don't ever stop trying. Don't ever sell out. We have to remember each one of those things when it comes down to the daily stressors that we're dealing with. We have to remember the why. Why do you do what you do? Right? Now, the final step is to reconnect once again with your why. Your why is your drive, y'all. Why is living your ultimate desired life and, and thinking well so important for you, right? Why is living your ultimate desired life and thinking well so important for you? It's so important for you. So in in closing this out, if you truly desire to become a millionaire, to become an entrepreneur, to have a better loving relationship, to improve your health, to change your career, to become an entrepreneur, your why will become your new default. Whereas in the past, your old story, that old dialogue would have been, which would have held you back. But that's no more, right? That is no more. This default is empowering. This default will drive you. And this default will make your ultimate desired life your reality. So remember why you do what you do. Remember why, remember why, remember the narrative, remember your vision as well. 
Now, I know this has been a lot of information and I truly enjoy this because I get so fired up and get so excited because I truly believe, like I said, I believe you have the power to be great, to do great and have great. You just have to be willing to unleash that greatness and take action. And I just gave you a lot of great information. I gave you a lot of great tips so that you can begin to take action on your life so that you can begin to really tap into your story and changing that narrative, right? You can begin to dream big, dream bold, and dream without limitations. Yes, you're going to have stressors. Yes, you're going to have challenges and obstacles. Those will always be there. Trust and believe. I know you know. Yes, we have big decisions that we're dealing with. We have, you know, loved ones that we argue and fight with and people in our families that may be sick or dealing with disease and we've lost loved ones. There's so much that we have every single day that we can be stressed about. But again, I shared with you some strategies that I really hope that you're able to tap into and not just tap into, but utilize in your own life so that you can manage your stress better. And ultimately, ultimately, I want you to be able to live in your greatness and take control of your life by managing your stress. Now, like I say on the show every single week, please, if you desire to have more information, if you, as I have shared, if you're looking for a a powerhouse team to be connected with, please reach out. Again, you can reach out to Jerisha, that's J-A-R-E-S-H-A, at empoweronpurpose.com. Please reach out and we can definitely get you connected. Um, please share your questions, your comments as well. I thank you all so much for tuning in to the Empower Hour with Jerisha show this evening. If you are interested in starting your own show or being a guest on the show to share your amazing story and journey to equip, encourage, and empower others for growth and success, please visit www.envisionbroadcasting.com to learn more. Please tune in next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where you will hear another amazing story and journey from another leader, influencer, and motivator. Until next time, stay safe and be blessed. Thank you for listening to the Empower Hour with Jerisha where Jerisha speaks with leaders, influencers, and motivators who share their journey in personal and professional growth. Empowerment tips, lessons learned, and keys of success that will empower you to your best self. Follow Jerisha on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Jerisha Moore and visit www.empoweronpurpose.com. Remember to be intentional and be empowered and have a great day on purpose.